um, it says a spectator at a parade receives a oh yeah, right right this is um so you have to imagine this picture um i think this is the only doppler effect question we have i tend to skip out on doppler effect when i cover waves and sound waves um mainly because uh, i i think uh, there's much more interesting uh, aspects of Doppler effect that has to do the light that we do cover when we do special relativity in physics 4C. Um, yeah, but it, it, so, you know, I, I don't put, while I don't put as much emphasis here, it, uh, I guess, um, uh, but it's something that you should know, so I should cover it. I think that's why I started asking this one question. So we have a trumpeteer who has, and if I can draw a trumpet, trumpet looks something like this. Um, trumpeteer who's emitting some sound and it's a saying that um, a spectator so as the sound is coming to the spectator the spectator says oh the frequency observed is 888 hertz but if you ask the trumpeteer what frequency of sound that, that the trumpeteer was playing they would say the frequency at the source is a, a 2.5 hertz. So there's a difference shift in frequency, and this is described by Doppler effect, uh, Doppler shift. I can't spell Doppler. <laughs> it's described by, uh, it's described by Doppler shift or Doppler effect. There's a formula that relate to these two frequencies together and um, and um, and relates them together using speed of the source and the speed of sound. Uh, here it is, speed of sound, we need that. Uh, um, don't know what symbol we use for that. I think we just use we, uh, speed of sound. So there's a Doppler shift formula, and I say uh, this is one of those where um, I'm not going to try to memorize it because, um, as you will see when you look it up in the textbook, it's quite complex formula. Um, and uh, so, I guess uh, if you really needed it and somehow didn't have your textbook handy, then the thing to do would be to try to redrive it. But it, this is one of those things where. You know, you should be able to find it and look it up <laughs> about the Doppler effect formula is. And I think this is one of the reasons I don't like covering it when we do sound. The Doppler effect for sound waves, they look super, um, well, they need a whole table to tell you all the different um, possible formulas it can be. Like this is the table of Doppler effect. and. <laughs> Um, I don't like this complexity, but you know what? You can just look it up here. Just look it up. And I guess uh, you could uh, memorize this version, but what I worry about is uh, you might, people could mix up what's in the numerator and denominator. And so I would just look it up. So here it is. Here's the table of my Doppler shift formulas. So we have um, oncoming, yeah. Um, parade receives, uh, yeah, yeah. So we have a source moving towards the observer. So, okay, let me just write this down. We have, so this is the Doppler shift formula that I'm going to use as a starting point. The frequency observed is equal to frequency at the source times the speed of sound divided by speed of sound minus the speed of the source. So this is the speed of the source. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this expression and solve it for uh, speed of the source. That's a simple algebra. Oh, uh, let me use the sage math to do that. I mean, you know, it, I, I think you should be able to do algebra like this by hand, uh, but it's also uh, useful to have a tool that you can use to check. And we did introduce this tool this semester, so let's just use it. Let me declare the variables observe the frequency, source frequency, speed of sound, and speed of the source. Okay. Those are the symbols I need. And the equation, I would say, is uh, my um, source 
uh, observed frequency is equal to um, this meaning of the, this is an assignment symbol. I'm assigning what I'll have on the right hand side to the variable eq. And <laughs> what I have on the right hand side will, will be a statement that observed frequency is equal to, that's the equal to symbol in sage math, uh, uh, source frequency times v divided by uh, v minus vs. So let me just make sure that that's the equation I expect to it to be. And the algebra solver in sage math is called a solve. Um, so I say solve this equation uh, for the variable uh, vs. And it'll solve it and give me the answer. Okay, so that's the answer. Uh, let me put that into a solution variable so that I can work with it. I can plug in the numbers. So, uh, so I can take this. And by the way, I, it it returns an array. So that's why I'm taking the zeroth element, the which is the first element in the array. And with this, I can substitute in values. I can substitute in okay. Observe the frequency is eight eighty eight hertz. The source frequency is 882.5 hertz. And I just check to make sure the observed frequency is higher. That's what you expected it to be. And uh, the speed of sound is 337 uh, meters per second. Yeah. So with that, we get the answer. The speed of the source was 2.09 meters per second. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's a kind of a brisk pace, right? Uh, I think when I walk normally, it's like 1.5 meter per second. But anyways, um, so yeah, that, that's the answer. Um, the, I can't wait. <laughs> that's the answer. Uh, to, and, you know, I mean, so use of computer algebra system, you should check in each class uh, what the instructors policies about computer algebra system uh, for my class it, it's uh, uh, it's fine yes that's why i'm <laughs> demonstrating use of it um i mean i guess if we had an in-person exam then i would give you this caution that this is a tool that you wouldn't have access to during the exam so you should uh, still continue to develop your algebra skill and i i think there's a value in developing your algebra skill so you should practice uh, while you are practicing, uh, having this way to look up the answer, uh, it's fine for you to have and it's fine for you to use. Because for most of the questions in this class, really the most uh, difficult step is the uh, the step of finding the right equation. Or, you know, here it was literally finding the right formula, but in many other situations, um, you have to apply the general uh, laws like Newton's laws to uh, get to the system of equations. And solving the system of equations, that's just the math. Uh, it can be automated using Sage Math. And I'm fine with you automating it because in real, um, scientific and engineering work where you have to do something like this, oftentimes you would uh, have a computer algebra system that'll uh, do that mechanical step of uh, working out the mathematical solution. So 